In the last video, we started looking at sequences and series, and in particular, recurrence relations. We're now going to move on and look at arithmetic sequences. Arithmetic sequences are often called arithmetic progressions, or AEPs for short. An arithmetic sequence will have a common difference, so our sequence will either go up or down by a fixed amount. An example of an arithmetic sequence could be 4, 7, 10, 13, 16, 19, and so on and so forth. So we could say that this is an AP. It's going up by 3, by 3, by 3, by 3. We can say that the first term A in this particular case is 4, and the common difference is going to be positive 3. If we now look at a different sequence, let's say we've got 2, 6, we've got 11, we've got 17, we've got 24, and so on and so forth. Well, it's going up by 4, it's going up by 5, it's going up by 6, it's going up by 7. This is not arithmetic. It's not going up or down by a fixed amount. Let's look at another one. We've got 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, and so on and so forth. This is going down by 1 each time. So it is arithmetic. We can say that the first term, A, is going to be 1, and the common difference is going to be minus 1. So that's a nice example of an arithmetic progression or arithmetic sequence. Uh, let's try a slightly trickier one. Let's go for 1 half. Let's go for 1 6. Let's go for minus 1 6. Let's now go for minus 1 half and minus 5 over 6. Is this now an arithmetic progression? Well, if I subtract these away, I'm going to get a third, and then I subtract a third, and this looks now to be one third. So, with this one right here, we need to be careful and check all of the terms. I'm pretty confident that's an arithmetic progression, and we can see that the first term, A, is going to be one half, and the common difference is going to be minus one third. But do check all of the terms in the sequence. Sometimes students only check the first couple and then decide it is arithmetic, only to find later that it isn't. OK, let's do another one. Let's do 1, 5. Let's go for 9. Let's go for 13. Let's go for 17. Uh, 21. Let's go for 24 and so on and so forth. So it's going up by 4, up by 4, up by 4, up by 4, up by 4. But then we go up by 3. So this is not arithmetic. I've included this one simply to say, make sure you're checking all of the terms in that sequence before deciding whether it's going up or down by a fixed amount. So it looked like this one was going up by four each time, but in fact, it isn't, and it is not arithmetic. So first term in an arithmetic sequence is A, we've got the common difference of D. So what we could say, if we wanted, we could write out now the general terms in a sequence. We could write the following. We could write the first is A. Then we would get A plus one lot of a difference. Then we would get A plus two lots of a difference. So what we're doing is building up these terms. Plus A, and then we've got three lots of a difference. Write the way up to the last term, or the nth term. Now, the nth term is going to give us now A plus N minus one lots of a difference. So let's just apply it to this one. What we've got is our first term of four. Then what we've got is 4 plus 3. That's just the common difference. What we then have is 4, which is the first term, plus 2 lots of 3. And we can see that gives us a 10. Then we've got 4 plus now 3 lots of a difference. So each time in each of the terms, we've just got now the first term plus n minus 1 lots of a difference. And this now forms the nth term. So if we wanted to write down now a sub n, let's write this here, a sub n is given as a plus n minus 1 d. And this will allow us to find any term in an arithmetic sequence. Now you might see this written as a sub n is a sub 1 plus n minus 1 d. So these things are essentially the same. We're just taking a or a sub 1 to be the first term. So for example now, if I wanted the 20th term, I could write a sub 20 will be a sub 1 plus now 19 lots of a difference. If I wanted now the 100th term, a sub 100, I would take the first term plus now 99 lots of a difference. And as you can see, we can jump straight to terms in an arithmetic sequence by using the nth term. 
So this is the nth term formula we use when we have now a common difference. If we look, let's write this down. Here, we've got a, n, and d in here. I strongly suggest whenever you're working with arithmetic sequences to write this down. This is going to be the first term. This is going to be the number of terms, or the number of the term, and this is going to be the common difference. And that's the information we need. So, let's go ahead and work through some basic examples of this. What I'm going to do is just take now a, a sequence. So, let's, let's take the same one. Let's take 4, 7, 10... And then we had 13 and we had 16. What I want to do is find now the ninth term. And now I want to find, let's go, let's take now the 22nd term. What we could do here, let's just think about this. We could just count on. Really, the ninth term we could just go ahead and write out. So if I just kept adding 3, and then we'd have 22, and then we'd have 25, and we could just keep this going, 28, and so on and so forth. So if we consider now the ninth term in this particular one, we're going to end up now with 28. But quite clearly, that's not something we can rely on. Uh, students often, well, sometimes want to just write these out manually and find it. But if I then said the 22nd term of 100, it becomes a bit of a nightmare. So what we're going to do is start off now with the ninth term. We know that the nth term, a sub n, so any term in an arithmetic sequence can be given as a plus n minus 1, lots of a difference. So what we're looking for now is the following. We're looking for a sub 9. I suggest every time you fill out one of these, you write down A, N, and D down the side of the page. Again, it might seem tedious, but it will help you out. A is 4. That's the first term. N, we're looking for the ninth, and D is going to be now the common difference. The common difference in this particular sequence is 3. So what we're going to have then is A sub 9 is going to be 4 plus and then we're going to have n, which is 9, minus 1, which is 8 lots of the difference. The difference is 3. So we can see now that's 24 plus 4. We can say the ninth term is going to be 28. And we knew that anyway because we worked it out manually. But what about the 22nd term? So a, n, and d, what we've got, a is 4. We've got n, which is 22, and d is 3. So we can say a sub 22 is going to be a, which is the first term, or a sub 1, plus now 21 lots of the difference. So we can see that's going to give us 63. 63 plus 4 is 67. So the 22nd term is 67. And quite clearly, you don't want to be going and manually um, working all of those out. So just be a, a little careful. Um, and the reason I say be a little careful is sometimes we won't have always have numeric values. So let's say uh, let's say we've got now, let's go for something else. Let's go for 3q, 5q, let's go for 7q, and let's go for 9, uh, 9q. And let's say we wanted now uh, the 12th term. So let's look at the 12th term. And again, you can probably do this in your head, but let's write out the information. We've got A. The first term is 3Q. If we look at N, that's going to be 12. I want now the 12th term. Let's look at D. So all I've written is AND. OK, so what's the common difference? Well, the common difference is going to be 2Q. OK, so all we need then, let's write our formula. A sub N is equal to A sub 1 plus N minus 1D. The more you do this, the more that becomes lodged in your brain. Um, it's just something you get used to. The nth term is the first one plus n minus 1 multiplied by the difference. So let's sub this in. What we want then is a12. We want the 12th term. That's going to be the first one, which is going to be 3q, plus 11 lots. That's n minus 1, lots of a difference, which is going to be 2q. So we can say the 12th term is going to be 22q plus 3q, which is going to be 25q. And of course, you could have just gone ahead and added those up. But we can just now apply this formula for when it does get quite tough. And you will be expected to show some work in if this is an exam style question. Let's do another one. Let's say we've got a finite sequence. So a finite sequence has a fixed amount of terms. And let's say that, that let's go for 2, 7, 12, uh, 17 plus dot, dot, dot. And then we'll go up to 47. And what we want to do now at this stage is find the number of terms in this sequence. 
Again, you can probably say, well, I'll do it manually. Unfortunately, after a while, doing it manually is not going to be an option. So what we want to do is find now the number of terms in this sequence. So we want number. OK, so let's go ahead and do that. So what do we know? Let's write this out. A, N and D. So we're going to have now the following. And also I'm going to write in A sub N. Let's just put A sub N. A sub N is going to be 47 and we'll come back to that shortly. Right, that is going to be 2. We want N, so we don't know what that's going to be, so I'll just call it N. And the difference now is going to be 5. So we know that A sub N is equal to A or A sub 1 plus N minus 1 D. So we know that A sub N, this is the nth term, it's the last term. So we've got 47 is going to be equal to 2. And then we're going to get plus n minus 1 multiplied by the difference. So subtracting now 2, we've got 45 is equal to 5 lots of n minus 1. And then we can divide both sides by 5. So we've got 9 is equal to n minus 1. Add 1 to both sides. So we can see now the number of terms in the sequence is going to be 10. So often we'll be asked to use the formula uh, and apply it when we're not actually looking to find uh, the term, we're looking to find the number of terms, or we're looking to find the common difference, or we're looking to find a piece of information given other pieces of information that we've already had or been given. Um, in later videos, we'll look at some exam style questions when things become slightly harder. All I want to do in this particular video is get some idea of how we can manipulate this formula and look at the behavior of these sequences. Okay, let's do another one. Let's say now uh, we'll do a different one. Let's go for the third term. So the third term of an arithmetic progression, so third term is going to be equal to minus eight. Let's say now the sixth term, so the sixth term, let's say that's gonna be minus 17. What we want to find is the first term, and let's just find lots of information. First term, uh, let's find now the common difference. And if we wanted, we could find, say, let's say, the 100th term. Um, it really doesn't uh, It really doesn't matter. We're just looking at applying the formula and getting some idea of what's going on here. Again, you could do this mentally in your head. You could just sort of set this out and work out now that this is going back by a fixed amount. But if we consider now the third term, the third term is the first one plus two lots of the difference. And that's going to be equal to minus 8. Just consider now that the nth term is going to be now a sub n is going to be a plus n minus 1 d. So what we have, n minus 1 multiplied by d. So this is what we have. So we're going to say now that the nth of a uh, third term in this particular case is going to be now a plus 2 lots of a difference. Let's look at the sixth term. That's going to be the first term now plus 5 lots of a difference. And that's going to be equal to minus 17. So if we subtract downwards, well, it's entirely up to you to subtract downwards, or you can subtract upwards, it really doesn't matter. We're going to get now minus, so the a's are going to cancel, we're going to get now minus 3d. And that's going to give us now a total. What are we going to have on there? Uh, that's going to be equal now to 9. So what we can see from here, the difference is going to be equal to minus 3. And we have now got that value. All we need to do is sub it back in to either one of these equations. We've got two simultaneous equations, which we can go ahead and solve now for a. So if we put that back into 1, a plus 2 lots of minus 3 will be equal now to minus 8. So what's that going to be? a is going to be equal to 6 added to minus 8. That gives us minus 2. So that tells us now the first term is minus 2 and the common difference is going to be minus 3. And of course, you can go ahead and find whichever term in the sequence that you now want. If you wanted the 20th term, all you do, a, n, d. We know now that a is minus 2. We know that the common difference is going to be minus 3. And then we would look now to find the 20th term and you just sub it into the formula. So that's now using simultaneous equations to find, uh, for example, a common difference and a first term. I think with all of these questions, you just have to keep focused on the idea that this is going up or down by a fixed amount. OK, let's look at another one. Let's say uh, I'll write another one. Let's say the third term now is going to be, uh, let's say that's going to be 2x. Let's say the fourth term, and we will be told that this is arithmetic. If you're not, um, you've been a bit hard done by. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's say the fifth term, and what can we have for fifth term? 11 minus x. What we want to do is find the first. Uh, so find the first. We want to find the 
first term in terms of, of now a numeric value. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, the first thing I'm saying to myself is the third term is 2x, the fourth term is x minus 3, the fifth term is 11 minus x. Now, if I, if I just wrote out an arithmetic sequence, say I've got 4, 7, 10, 13, I know that this one subtract this one is going to be the same as this one subtract this one in the way that it's going to be this one subtract this one. So if we look, if I do the fourth minus the third, that must be equal to the fifth minus the fourth. So if we do fourth minus third, that will be equal now to fifth minus fourth, as now we've got a fixed amount. So what we can do here is just write the following. We can write x minus 3 minus 2x. So I've taken the fourth term and subtracted. That must be the same as doing 11 minus x minus the quantity x minus 3. So all I've done is gone ahead and just said, well, if it's a fixed amount, then we can subtract them away and it should give us the same amount. So what does that leave me? That leaves me now over here, minus x minus 3. And then what are we going to have? 11 minus minus 3 is going to give me 14. And that's going to give me now 14. And then we're going to have minus 2x. So let's add 2x to both sides and then add 3 to both sides. That gives me x is equal to 17. So at the moment, we've got x is equal to 17. So if I look at this one right here, that tells me now that the third term is going to be 2 lots of 17, which is 34. This one right here is going to be 17 minus 3, which is going to give me now 14. And then this one right here, what are we going to get on this one? That's going to give me minus, uh, what have we got? Minus 6. So we can see now that the common difference from here is going to be now d is going to be minus 20. So that now gives us the common difference. And of course, all we would need to do is go ahead if we wanted. We could work out the first term. We could work out any term right here. So what we've got here, and if we just look at it now, we can say that the third term a plus 2d is going to be equal now to our value of 34. So a plus 2 lots of minus 20 is going to be equal to 34. So we can see the first term is going to be 34 plus 40, which is going to give me 74. And that gives us the first term. So we've just subbed it in to find it. And there were a number of different ways you could do that. I'm just thinking as I go on that one. But all we're doing is just using this idea that this is just a common difference. And then we can find any term by using a plus n minus 1d. So a few different ways around that problem. But when you're faced with something that looks a bit of a mess, just think, what are the properties of an arithmetic sequence? And then go ahead and apply them. So in later videos, we'll start to look at exam style questions. When we look at those, it'll be similar to the one we've just done, but also we'll get some wordy questions. And often with the wordy questions, it's just a case of pulling the maths out and writing a list of A, N, D. And when we come on to the, the series, A, N, D, S and L, and we'll introduce those in the next video. But essentially, all we're looking to do is find some values and then apply them to the formula and check that it holds true. So that's a brief introduction now to arithmetic sequences or arithmetic progressions and then in the next video we will look at series.